We have a 60-person delegation heading to Kai Festa this year, 2017, Kai Festa 13 in Barbados. And uh, in order to showcase to the public what we are offering to Barbados and what we are showcasing, we are having a Kai Festa showcase at Napa this Wednesday coming, which is the 9th of August, and we are inviting everyone to come down. It's a free event, but it's ticketed, and so we are asking persons to visit the Napa um, box office and get their tickets. On show, we will have the delegation, so we have a wide range because, as you know, we are hosting Kaya Festa 2019 in Trinidad and Tobago. Yes. And therefore, though we are hosting um, not too large a delegation, we have a very good spread of um, persons going up, different artists. So we are participating in the pan. We have a pan side, Newtown Playboys will be there. We are participating, um, we have Indian classical dance. We have Indian song, Neval Chetlal is with us going. We have Calypso and Chutney, Aaron Duncan, young Aaron Duncan is on board with us as well. We have the traditional dancing, um, belly dancing, folk dancing from Tobago. Tobago is on board. So we have quite a wide range. We have spoken word, we have storytelling, and we are going to showcase that for the national public on Wednesday because we want them to have the pride knowing that we are going to be well represented at Kaya Festa 30. So we are setting the stage for 2019 essentially. Yes. Now, what, what really is the, the purpose of Carry Festa? How does it benefit us? Is it, is it to monetize our product, to take it out of Trinidad and Tobago? What, what do you see this being, the purpose of it? Yeah, that's one of the main purposes, ensuring that those who are involved in the creative industries have a chance to showcase to the region what they are involved in. Every country in the Caribbean has a slightly different spin on different things, so craft, music, dance, and so so that is a chance for us to showcase to the region and to celebrate with our regional partners. It's also a chance for the region to be put onto the national, international map. So Carifest is a chance as well for international viewers to come and to see what is on display in the Caribbean. As you would know, um, we also have fashion going up and that's one of the growing industries. And um, people are really cognizant now of Caribbean fashion yes. and its place in the, national land, the international landscape. And so it's a chance for us to celebrate together, for us to share best practices together, as well as to showcase to the international audience what we have in the Caribbean. Now, when we talk fashion, we think fabric, mm -hmm. we think design, we think yes. money. Tell us about the budget. Any constraints this year and, and how do we plan to work around it? Well, of course, we are constrained by our economic circumstances, but what we have done is um, to not limit ourselves in terms of the breadth of our offering. So our delegation this year is about 60, which was one of our smaller delegations, but what we have tried to infuse is the breadth of it. So we have the spoken word, we have the pan, we have the storytelling. We've put quite a number of artisans into it and also try to multitask as much as possible so that um, we have a number of things represented, even though we have a slightly smaller delegation than we usually have. Now, uh, in the past, like back in 2013, there were issues raised in terms of Tobago not being represented well in, in the Cari Festa. Yeah. Um, have those issues been addressed this year? Can we expect some persons from Tobago being part of this team? Most certainly, we have worked um, in the planning stages for the delegation as well. We have worked very closely with Tobago and we are happy that they are on board with us and they are also forming part of the delegation and will be well, well represented. So we've been working with the Secretary, um, Secretary Stewart, ensuring that we have that representation from Tobago. So. Now this, would be a, a, this is a special year in terms of us setting the stage for 2019. Yes. What do you think is different about this year that you really want to show off about Trinidad, that it's really different to, to really set that stage for 2019? But I'm not sure if there's anything particularly different, but what we want to ensure is that we represent with excellence. And we always do. So we've taken particular care to ensure that what we put out to the regional audience is something of excellence. And um, we've had uh, nominations from the different agencies, so for example, UTT for fashion. We've looked at the Bocas Lit Fest for the oral, which is the spoken word as well as the storytelling. So we have tried to partner with as many agencies as possible to ensure that what we present is excellent because, of course, we are setting that stage for 2019. Now, you always mention that our greatest uh, tourism product is our cultural product, mm -hmm. and this is a chance to showcase yes. that. Uh, do you think that we are taking full advantage of this opportunity this time around to do 
to do exactly that. I believe we are. And what we are focusing on as well um, internally within Trinidad and Tobago as well as externally is our handicraft market. Um, we recently concluded a handicraft symposium. And what we are attempting to do as well um, in this showcase on, on Wednesday is to highlight our local handicraft artisans. We have many of extremely high quality. And what we recognize is that this may not necessarily be exposed to the national public in the way that it should be. And so we are taking great pains to highlight our handicraft um, artisans, both in the showcase as well as when you go to Barbados. We want to revive that industry in a big way as we speak cultural tourism, as we speak diversification. Um, these are industries that can assist us in this area. Well, we continue the discussion with the Minister of Community Development, Culture and the Arts, Dr. Nian Gadsby Dolly, and we shift the focus a little bit from Carrie Fester. But before we go there, I know it's not your portfolio. However, the trade union movement is mobilizing today for a mass demonstration. And what are your thoughts on this right now? Well, you know, the beauty of Trinidad and Tobago is that we are a democratic society, and everyone has the right to express themselves. And once they are within the legal framework. And um, the government of Trinidad and Tobago is in no way desirous of changing that. And, you know, we allow people to do as they believe they should. All right, great. So let's go to Best Village. We switch yes. gears to culture. We're talking Best Village. What are mm -hmm. your thoughts? I know training would have started, I think, in January, between the period of January to yes. April of participants. How did that go? What's your, the feedback you've had so far? Best Village is well underway. Um, back in January, we would have started training. And the prelims would sort have of started just after Carnival. What we have tried to do this year with Best Village is to cull the number of categories and increase the training. And this comes out of our discussions with the Best Village participants. And what we are aiming to do is to increase the quality of the artisan that comes out of Best Village. So we've increased training and we have adjusted the program just a bit so that we can get better quality coming out at the end of it. And so we are on to now the finals of Best Village coming up from August 7th to the 19th. And we have the schedules out. We have been in the press um, advertising the schedules. All Marketing. the finals are free yes. to the public, okay. which again is something new. There was a small charge before, but we want to encourage participation, not just for the artists, but also for the national public in coming out to see these events. It's holiday time, so we're encouraging parents, bring your children. Quite a number of the finals are in Sapa, and we have the Lauren Reve happening at Napa. So we are encouraging people to come out and support the Best Village finals. They are free of charge, gift to the nation from the ministry and the government. And um, we're looking forward to a really great finals. Now, this meshes with your role as a community development minister yes. as well, because you're encouraging persons from the community to come out. Mm -hmm. How do you work towards getting young talent? How do you get persons to come out and support or be part of this? And I understand that you are trying to collaborate with UTT for some yes. training. Tell us about that. We are working with UTT right now. Um, one of the things that have come from the cultural sector is a uh, dearth of pan tuners. And so we have been working with UTT to reestablish a pan tuning program um, as well as Calypso writing because those are two areas that young people are interested in. There is actually a pan tuning happening, pan manufacture happening in some of our secondary schools around the country. Uh, this is coming from the Pan in Schools initiative that still operates in some schools. And so we are seeing a nexus between there are quite a number of young people who have graduated with CVQ qualifications in pan manufacture and would like to take that next step. So we are working with UTT on that kind of arrangement. Of course, you would know that young people are very involved in Calypso as well. Yes. Um, junior Calypso is a big thing. And so we want to ensure that the indigenous art of Calypso writing is preserved in Trinidad and Tobago and the skill uh, you know, the calypsos, I, I saw somebody speaking about the calypsos of yesteryear and the difference in topics and the, the double entendre and ensuring that we keep that kind of focus. So we are working with, with UTT to professionalize the sector in that sense. All right. Also, Cambuli, I know you mentioned mm -hmm. that you wish it could be packaged for export and yeah. put forward as part of our carnival product. Mm -hmm. Where are we with that? You know, there are different thoughts on Cambuli. It's been a... Um, on Piccadilly Street, which is the birthplace of Carnival. And uh, you know, just going over the last two years, 
it really has exploded in terms of numbers. And uh, it would be nice if we can accommodate more people. Um, the thing is, though, for it to re retain its authenticity, it has to stay in its birthplace, but it's almost at maximum point. So we really need to discuss if we can have that presentation at another time or in another space. And I know the organizers of Cambly, Palenta Springer and so on, um, I did indicate that we would have that kind of discussion. We haven't broached it yet, but we need to have that discussion because Cambly is really something that is so wonderful. I know that more people would appreciate seeing it. And so we have to broach our discussion. We haven't just yet, but I'm sure we'll get around to it in the near future. Now, Carnival, the band launches, they've started already. They start. Now, how are plans for next year? Small, smaller budget? Well, we anticipate that if we have no change in our um, economic circumstance, the budget, yes, may be smaller. And what we've noticed is that it has inspired the groups to work a little bit harder mm -hmm. at keeping the important parts of the festivals and the celebrations and uh, cutting away some of the, the fringes that we would have come to enjoy over the years. So we don't anticipate that the smaller budget would necessarily impact on the important parts of the festival. And of course, it spurs us on to ensuring that we don't have waste um, happening within the festival. So we look forward to the festival being as good as it usually is. All right, now, for the first time, we're having a holiday for the First Peoples. Yes. This is October 13th, I mm -hmm. understand, and they've expressed their appreciation for this. How, how do you feel? Where, where do, in the future, do we see something else happening to, to possibly, you know, honor them and that kind of thing? Well, the First Peoples have, um, for years, been advocating for this holiday, and so we are glad, as the government of Trinidad, we could to have delivered that for them. And we continue to work with them, they also have been the benefactors of, um, the beneficiaries, sorry, of a parcel of land, and that is underway. They have the land, and we are doing everything to regularize that so that they can um, celebrate in the way they would want to, as well as during the, the course of the year. I know they have plans for the land and how they want to use it to build awareness of the First Peoples, and they have been expressing the fact that um, they want to educate the public on the, the truth about the First Peoples and so. So we are working with them, continue to work with them to explore the option of using their land in the way they want to. And so we anticipate that we will also um, maintain this mm -hmm. working relationship with the First Peoples. A new NCC chairman is being sought. Uh, as mm -hmm. far as we understand, uh, Kenny De Silva said he was stepping down. Uh, I know that there was talk of this over the carnival, but that has not materialized, and okay. we don't anticipate that it would. What about Tuku and mass bans? Last we heard they were taking um, legal action over the appointment of members to the NCC, and you said that I think yeah. you welcome the judicial review. Any update on that? Yes, because, well, we don't have any update on it at the moment. The NCC, of course, would deal with it more intimately. Um, there's that issue of the mass bans and who is most representative has been contentious for years, and so this judicial review will be welcome, yes, because it would um, formalize the process for the mass bans and their representation on the NCC board, and we, we welcome whatever the decision of the court is. Before, before our time runs out, I want to really talk about the Carnival Museum really quickly, because yeah. I know you said you want to find a way to promote Carnival outside of that Carnival season, yes. and also with the artifacts and that kind of thing, it'd be put to good use. Mm -hmm. Where are we with that? We have been in discussion with various bodies on being able to create a carnival museum. Uh, for years, of course, the cultural landscape has been devoid of that, and uh, cultural practitioners have been calling and clamoring for that. So we are in active discussion, um, considering different models, considering, of course, the cost, and if there's anything in our um, infrastructure right now that can be used for that purpose, even if it is not um, at the level we would want it to be over the years, but we want to make a start on that definitely, and we are in discussion, and we hope to make significant progress in 2018.